The owner will tie them on. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. I rise to support the motion of the Honourable Ben Franklin and agree with him that Anzac Day is Australia's most important national day of commemoration. I was honoured to attend Anzac services on the Central Coast and in Newcastle earlier this year. I attended the Tarragal Glen Retirement Village in Erina for the dawn service. The Tarragal Glen dawn service has been held for many years and has become a firm tradition at the village, with over 100 residents and visitors attending. It was a moving service that featured an army cataphlac party, piper and bugler, who performed ceremony, ceremonial duties. The service is organised by the resident subcommittee, chaired by Peter Thompson, who was formerly a member of the RAF uh, and the Australian, active, uh, Australian Army Active Reserve for over 40 years. I also attended the morning service in Civic Park, Newcastle. The service was preceded by the march that was well attended despite the poor weather. A low-level pass of uh, RAF Hawk 127s marked the start of the service, and Mr Stephen Finney, who was the MC, uh, who spoke of the sacrifices of those who fought in the First World War. I want to thank the President of the Newcastle RSL sub-branch, Ken Fale, for extending me, to me an invitation to attend that service. Uh, this motion seeks to acknowledge the contribution, service, sacrifice and bravery of our original Anzacs at Gallipoli. Uh, one of those Anzacs was Lieutenant Colonel Granville George Burnage, who, a wine and spirits merchant from Newcastle, and a Boer War veteran. Now, Lieutenant Colonel Burnage was 55 years old when he, first, when he entered the First World War as a commanding officer of the 13th Battalion, which over the course of the war became known as the Fighting 13th. Now, Lieutenant Colonel Burnage was there at the Gallipoli landing and said that early on the Allies' firing lines were sparsely manned and vulnerable to infiltration from the enemy. Uh, one night he was woken by a corporal who claimed that he had found a spy. The so-called spy was wearing a worn Australian uniform jacket, a pair of navy trousers and a black civilian cap and had a sheath knife on his belt. He claimed that he was Australian and snuck to the front lines as he just wanted to have a shot at the Turks. In his account, the lieutenant colonel wrote, the story was plausible but not satisfactory. So he continued questioning the potential spy who claimed that prior to joining the Anzacs, he worked on ships back home, including those in Newcastle. If I can quote him, in all Australian ports in the days of sailing ships, there were certain ho hotels very much frequented by seafaring men. So I shot at him, give me the name of your favourite pub in Newcastle. He gave me several names, the first two being the Black Diamond and the Blue Bell the former a prominent sailor's house known to all English-speaking men before the mast who had sailed out of Port Hunter. A lonely sailor in a foreign port could always rely on meeting a cobber by making a few remarks about the Black Diamond at Newcastle. Lieutenant Colonel Burnage continued questioning the man until he established that he was just an enthusiastic soldier and escort escorted him back to the beach and released him, not before giving him a firm dressing down about keeping away from other people's jobs. Uh, 2014 to 2018 is the centenary of the Anzac, marking 100 years since World War I. As Australia marks the 100th anniversary of the First World War, the New S South Wales Government is enhancing the Anzac Memorial with a contribution of $20.3 million that is supported with $19.6 million from the Commonwealth's Anzac Centenary Fund. The centenary project will be the enduring legacy of uh, New South Wales commemorations, Mr Deputy President. Uh, it will realise the vision of the original architect, uh, Bruce Dellett, and introduce new spaces. The centenary project will allow the memorial to tell the stories of New South Wales' involvement in all wars and peacekeeper missions and honour those who have served. One feature of the Anzac Memorial Enhancement is the Hall of Service. In 2016, the Anzac Memorial Centenary Project announced that Fiona Hall had been selected for her proposal to have the walls in the Hall of Service display the name of every town, suburb and settlement across New South Wales where men and women enlisted from the First World War. Alongside each place name will be displayed a sample of soil collected from each listed local. The Anzac Memorial says that this will uh, display the geographical reach of the call to serve 
and signals the willingness and enthusiasm of so many from diverse regions who answered the call to join the war. In total, there will be approximately 1,700 locations from throughout New South Wales displayed. The Anzac Memorial has commenced the collection of soil from these locations, uh, which is a massive undertaking. At each soil collection, there is a moving ceremony to mark the occasion. I've been privileged to attend two of these ceremonies thus far, in Arimba on the Central Coast and at Aberdeer near Cessnock in the Hunter. Uh, the ceremony in Aberdeer was held at the Aberdeer Memorial Gates at the entrance to the local cemetery. The gates list the names of the local Anzacs who answered the call of their country to fight in World War I. At the ceremony, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, the Honourable David Elliott MP, said, a century on, we honour these Australians by taking a sample of soil and placing it in the Hall of Service at the refurbished Anzac Memorial, so that it can be appreciated and commemorated by generations to come. It was an honour to join the Minister there that day and others, including Cessnock councillors Paul Dunn and Rod Doherty, to commemorate the supreme sacrifice of the men and women from across the Cessnock area who served their country. The Hunter region had a huge number of people give their lives to the war effort, and this important contribution will be recognised in the collection of soil from Aberdeer. The same could be said for the ceremony at Arimba, where collection, the collection was held at the World War I Memorial Arch, where I joined others, including Minister Elliott, and my colleague Scott MacDonald, and also Central Coast Councillor Gilly Pillen. Uh, the government is also honouring the centenary of the Anzac with the Community War Memorials Fund. The Community War Memorials Fund provides grants of up to $10,000 to councils, RSL sub-branches and community organisations for conservation advice and repair works on existing war memorials. Uh, recently, I was able to attend the East Maitland War Memorial with Maitland Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Sally Halliday, as well as Brad, um, Brad Keating and Neil Cromarty from the East Maitland sub-branch of the RSL. The Community War Memorials Fund has granted Maitland City Council to carry out repairs to the East Maitland War Memorial. Uh, $2,310 have been awarded from Community War Memorials Fund to further inform the work required at the 95-year-old William Street Memorial, uh, where rusted steel railings are damaging the perimeter sandstone pillars. Uh, this motion also refers to encouraging future generations to continue the Anzac Remembrance traditions in honour of those who have served our country. The Premier's Anzac Memorial Scholarship is a fantastic program, Mr Deputy President, which enables high school students to further their education by visiting key historic battlefields in France and Belgium, where Australians forged the Anzac spirit. Last year, Lachlan Smith from St Edwards College, East Gosford, was one of the students selected for this scholarship. New South Wales secondary schools are eligible to submit an online application to enter the ballot for the scholarship. Uh, 20 schools will then have the opportunity to select their 2019 Premier's Anzac Memorial Scholar based on an original piece of work by the scholarship candidates. Uh, I thank the Honourable Ben Franklin for bringing forward this motion. It is so important that we remember the sacrifice of our Anzacs, and I'm confident that local communities are solemnly making the service of their Anzacs and that of the younger generations uh, to still find relevance in this important National Day of Commemoration. I commend the motion to the House.